Just inside a village market, the big local news is the arrival of the season's first potatoes. Saturday, they came in. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Great. You wouldn't guess it, but an international story is growing here as well. The first hint, just outside, rustling in those plants you see on the rack. The second hint, up in those trees on the way into town. The wind is so constant here in Vestenkoff, they have a problem and an opportunity. Like much of Denmark, the village began putting up windmills 20 years ago. With favorable government rates for power, the mills were productive and profitable. But now they are sometimes too much of a good thing. Well, Denmark generates huge amounts of clean energy from its wind. Sometimes it has too much of it, and it can't store it. So it winds up dumping it, selling it to other countries for next to nothing, or even paying them to take the excess energy off their hands. Jens Jacobsen is a manager for the local power utility. Sometimes we sell it to Germany, and sometimes they have too much power in Germany, and therefore we actually pay them. And in that case, it's truly wasted energy. You could, could put it that way. Pure, clean wind energy, but no battery big enough to save it for when the townspeople need it. Then the thought is, if we could store that power somehow, the electri electrical power, that would be better than doing nothing. So Jens's utility, along with private companies and the Danish government, decided to try something. You'll have to go up there. Okay. Using technology you'd find in the space shuttle or space station, they built one of the world's only residential hydrogen fuel cell programs. What do we got here? What you see here is two generators which uh, splits the water and turn it into oxygen and hydrogen. Using power from the wind, the first step, electrolysis, takes plain old tap water, here's the water right here, and splits that water into its components, hydrogen and oxygen. Pure oxygen, pure hydrogen, and a little bit of pure water. In the second step, the hydrogen gas is pumped directly to people's homes, in this case, the Hansen families. Just next to the family garden hose, you can see where the hydrogen enters the house. It comes in through these pipes, it goes up into this box where the pressure is measured and regulated, and then it enters the house and the hydrogen fuel cell. The fuel cell is in here. Kurt Hansen's home is powered by a hydrogen fuel cell. This is it, yes. His is one of ten homes in the area, being used to see if this may be one way to store wind power, using the hydrogen like a battery. It's that simple. The project is considered so important, the Queen of Denmark came to see Kurt's home come online. About, uh, Although his English is limited, Kurt can explain how he used to heat his home in one word. Oil. And uh, what was wrong in three. Very, very expensive. And what motivates everyone here to find a solution. I think about 40, 50 years there will we'll uh, the oil will stop and we have to think uh, what we have to uh, use. In the third step, this fuel cell in Kurt's house breaks the hydrogen gas molecule apart creating heat and electricity. All without burning any fossil fuel or releasing any carbon. Just pure water, oxygen and hydrogen are the only byproducts. So where's the catch? From a purely energy standpoint, this yes. isn't a very necessarily very efficient right now. It is indeed not efficient. Meaning you have to use twice as much energy as what you get out of it. But remember, his area has limitless, clean, renewable power. Behind one of the project's demonstration pieces, you can see the actual stacks of hydrogen fuel cells, as well as the reflected abundance making this project possible. A project that suggests that one solution to complex energy problems may lay in the Earth's most simple, abundant elements, hydrogen, water, and wind. For World Focus, John Larson in Vestenkoff, Denmark.